feels insufficient, but it's all I have to offer. So I thank you for the support and the time and the attention you gave. Thank you. There we go, there was my punctuation. <laughs> Um, I am lucky enough to work at Lane Tech, which is a wonderful, wonderful school, and I have fabulous kids. And we have wonderful parents who support us and who are out on the line with us. And I had some incredible lessons from my students on the line, but we were in a high-income area. And so days on the strike were not so easy. Some of us got harassed. I was harassed on my way to the line and I had a, a car pull up after being harassed twice in my personal space, just walking to the line. I had an Escalade pull up and a gentleman told me, uh, he read my sign and said, if you care about children so much, why don't you work for free? <laughs> but the problem with that is that because I had been sworn at so many times earlier in the day, when I finished the discussion that I had with the man, I said thank you, because he kept it clean. And I, I had students next to me, and I don't, I don't know what lesson that taught. But this poem is as much of a call to action as I suppose I will ever write. This is how a political poem was bullied out of me. I had never been small until I heard how evil I am for being a teacher. With the lie levels rising in newspapers, emails, interviews, announcements, the steady flood of anti-teacher propaganda dissolves dignity past patience until I am invisible and taste of salt. Me. The frightening muse of room 202 is this incredible shrinking violet. I've often told my students to absorb environment and squeeze it into their writing, but I, hypocrite, cannot check my mail without earplugs and blinders now. There is always a top story that burns my cheeks ashen and I am scattered by breath, but there's no headline for me. Or for colleagues who've sold houses, who've taken on loans and gray street temples to brace for the fight. These headlines are about these politicians, their pockets and their pride. Articles full of double speak and fork tongue hissing. The mayor and board deal students as playing cards and stack decks, but they know nothing of the kids themselves. Her grammar jokes. His zombie impression. That he's afraid his father is never getting out of jail and his mom has breast cancer that she is the first in her family to go to college and got a full ride. That he came out of, his, out of the closet and his mother is praying for the evil to cease its possession. That she reinvents the world on the page and then stages it. These kids swirl in cutbacks, media overloads, starved affections and poetry. They swear and swagger and smile metal. The fact these kids are alive and breathing knowledge in deadly communities is more miracle than Lazarus rising, and they do. They baptize their papers in ink and wash drafts clean with red. They highlight, spotlight, moonwalk. I mean, they are teenagers. There are mad dashes down the hall. Too many tardies and dress code violations but they are green and sprouting. Dandelions and dahlias, ivy, wisteria, and willows. I am a simple gardener, tilling with words, preparing the ground. Loam, sand, silt, clay. <coughs> the clay models itself into familiarity into the expression of understanding that's unique to each 
child. The board wants me to see only numbers, to measure kids with percentages, to see them as payment and value added, but I am an English teacher, and numbers have never been my thing. <laughs> I see that their learning is the shape of a yellow raft on a green river. We are the river dwellers. There is no salt in our water. It feels wrong to hate politicians who have never met me. But they make us feel minuscule. Buzzing winged things like gnats or mosquitoes for being teachers. It makes me hunger for biblical retribution. So I will be an insect in a plague of cicadas. We will be dressed as a river of blood, a torrent of chant and noise. There is no poem for this fight. The mild-mannered will lose their voices from screaming chants, feet raw with marching hands, calloused for chalk, will be rubbed with new blisters from holding signs. If we are faceless, let us be the drought, the blight, the salt in this freshwater city, so our students will not be nameless, faceless scores in a city that hunts them for statistics. We are living the politics, not writing a poem. And I invite you, and thank you, for standing with me for that. Ooh.